Welcome to today's Coffee with Coaches, where we look at leadership through different lenses by sharing experiences with coaches and experts from various backgrounds. But we have one thing in common. All of us are uh, change makers, isn't it, uh, Glenn? Welcome. I, I welcome Glenn Cook Winchers today. Uh, Glenn, welcome. It's great to have you here. Would you please uh, introduce yourself briefly? Who are you? What do you do? Where Where do you live? Yeah, thank you, Fabian. It's lovely to be on here again, and you know, fantastic, and it's an honor and, and a privilege as well. I'm humbled to to get to speak to you and you know some of your audience and add you know hopefully add some value to, to people as well to the women that you you know potentially going to work with and have worked with. Um, so yeah, so me and my wife Charlie Jean, we we live in North Yorkshire in England, and we're both ex-military. That's obviously going to be come out in the conversation, I think. Um, for a period of time, I did 23 years in, in the military. Left in 2019, and but my wife's a, a dietitian, a, a sports dietitian, as you will. Um, so she pretty much works, so has worked for a while now with athletes, professionals, women and men with IBS. That's a niche. That's you know an absolute thing that she she helps people with IBS. And for me, leaving transitioning from the military and, you know, from being in senior management, I've just like dived in. I was going to do personal training, but even though I love fitness, it was like, no, let's. So I've, I've gone into the business with my wife um, as the head coach uh, for mindset coach. So I help people, her, her clients, as you will, with mindset, you know, uh, self development in, in terms of in, in that area. And Charlie deals with all the, you know, the health side of life. Clearly, she's, She's the professional. She's got the qualifications and the experience. So I don't get involved with that. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we do. I think that's absolutely interesting. That That's quite a change, really, in, in yeah. your career and in your life. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a big change. Big. Um, you get what's this, I think, called adjustment disorder. I was 23 years. So there was a, a bit of a sticky transition of about six months where things got a little bit crazy just I think you know from being in that military discourse community as you will being with all you know and then coming into because we we don't live near any military or ex-military we're just like full of you know like I guess what we'd say normal people if that, if that makes sense mm -hmm. so yeah it was it's a bit of a, it was a bit of a steep learning curve but I like learning you know and, and things you've got to be flexible in life and that's you know hopefully you know it makes you become a better person doesn't it you've got to grow you know each day rather than just staying stagnant yeah. Well, that's really very interesting. And of course, it uh, it will be so valuable to hear all of your experiences um, with leadership from the military, because that's that's quite something, isn't it? And, you know, um, Glenn, what what I notice and noticed in, in the corporate world is that most managers really face difficult challenges when it comes to, to managing people. They probably don't talk about it because you know they are the leader they are the manager but it's it's a difficult truth it's it's a yeah. and so i really would like to dive right in with a question with a first yeah. question what was your worst experience with leadership uh, ever and and why Ooh, so i guess I guess there's two stories come to mind, one that I wasn't directly involved in and one that I was, so um, objective, subjectively, as you will. Um, so the first one was, uh, was a while ago now, and it was during the um, Iraq conflict. And there was an incident there or a series of incidents where um, some soldiers, you know, clearly the names are in the papers, but I'm not going to mention sort of details, but there was a lot of soldiers that got involved with heavy handed, you know, heavy, heavy handling of prisoners of war, as you will, or prisoners, Iraqi prisoners, detainees. And yeah, they literally, you know, took it to the next level, you know, started physically and, and mentally abusing these, these, these civilians, you know, that had potentially done nothing wrong, you know, and they were being investigated for whatever, but there was no, you're innocent till proven guilty. Right. And the thing is with the leadership is, yeah, these, these young soldiers were doing, you know, they were going crazy and doing things to these, these civilians and the chain of command, you know, their, their managers, their leaders were kind of turning a blind eye. Some of them were, were even getting involved and it's just like, there was no, the, the whole incident, which lasted for a pe short period of time, it was just, a, the leadership was just, it just went sideways, you know, it just went, upside down i mean there's loads of there's loads of military stories like that you know that are very similar there's you know american ones where 
you know, unfortunately, um, people have been, you know, physically abused and tortured. And it's just, but when you get the chain of command, senior managers that have not got the moral courage to do anything about it, because maybe some of these soldiers are maybe bullies or, you know, heavy handed and they kind of maybe, it's just like, it's, it's wrong on so many levels. And bad things have happened in the past. We all know of, you know, pretty much all of us have got stories and have read things where in the military, outside of the military, where things have happened. Because ultimately, leaders are not, you know, managing people correctly, not putting, you know, discipline, because in that incident, it was the discipline that went, obviously, there was no discipline. Um, and it just went, it, it just went south, really. So that's, that's kind of the first one. Um, and the other one that I was directly involved with uh, when I was in the military was toxic leadership. And we've all heard the term toxic leadership, and there's different examples obviously you'll have examples in civilian sector and but you know for, for me personally it was a, a manager senior manager senior officer that I worked with and it was either his way or the wrong way you know even though we he had I was at the time I was a, a warrant officer he had other warrant officers and and senior non-commissioned officers that were excellent you know we were all had ex, could add excellent value to the organization and even though he was you know it would be like can you give me advice on this? And you'd say, well, you know, it, it'd listen, but it was like in one ear out the other, he'd do it his way. Sometimes it was right. Sometimes it was, it was wrong, <laughs> you know, and other people's way would have worked better. And it, so that had an impact because, you know, you're not, you're not encouraging the other people around you to think, you're not encouraging them to, you know, even though you're saying, come on, what's your idea? You, you're kind of undermining them and making them, you know, it's belittling them really. And at certain times, he, he, you know, like laugh, like, hey, don't be stupid. What? I'm giving you some value, you know, so trying to, you know, so that, that was a, a, a thing that happened. And it was worse than that. You know, there were there was times where uh, micromanagement was going on, you know, like what are you doing now? How are you doing that? No, yeah. Do it this way, do it that way. Just let people get on with it, you know, let people fail, you know, because if people fail, they learn, they learn from, well, good, you know, we, we try and learn from where, you know, our mistakes. But if you're not letting people make mistakes or you're trying to, trying to do it your way all the time, then yeah, it's, it creates a, a lot of negative, negative energy, I guess, in the workspace. Yes, absolutely. And uh, what, what about this experience uh, made you lay awake at night or maybe your colleagues? Yeah, so for, it, it did actually add quite a bit of an effect. Uh, it did impact me and a, a few of us, to be fair. Um, just really annoyed, you know, because as a soldier, especially, or any professional, really, when you're in uh, middle to senior management and you're good at your job, you know, you're like, you know, you're always putting the effort in. And then, you know, you're kind of just getting pumped. Things are just getting all the time and you're trying to add value and it's like, pff, whatever whatever it's frustration you know it's, it's frustrating because it is if you're a professional you know professional person it's like really frustrating and you know even though my way is not always the right way clearly you know as as anybody's but it's just and then when you're trying to do trying to do your job and just trying to get on with your job that you know you're good at and then just having someone breathing down your neck all the time yes. it's just like And then at night time, you're like frustrated. You've got this negative energy. You're, you're trying to go to the gym to work out harder just to get rid of it. And it's like, it can get really difficult. Yeah, it gets really difficult. Yeah, it's, re it's really, yeah. This is really terrible. And it's a problem that exists in the corporate world as well. You know, uh, micromanagers, um, they, are, they think that they are leader, but they are, you know, this... Uh, Yeah, this micromanager demotivating everyone. And um, how did this impact your career or maybe even your, your life? Yeah, so in terms of my career, I would say it didn't impact it too much in, in terms of, I still got, at the time I was a warrant officer, so I was, I was very senior anyway, and I still promoted to the next rank up else into another, in another organization. But that actual reporting period, It did affect that report. So my, you know, my report was like average, you know, kind of maybe even below average in some areas. And I'd, you know, for that time that I was there, you know, as a term, I was, I was, I was digging out. You know, I was working my butt off to, you know, and I know sometimes you can be working your butt off and still not do well. So I, I get, I get that as well. But and there was a few people that, you know, and the other thing as well is, he had. There was. It was obvious that you know he had 
a couple of favorites within the organization and we're talking about 12 instructors three were like three or four were yeah favorites and all the others knew this so it wasn't just me that was affected. I could see that some of the officers, you know, the captains and the colour sergeants, they were affected a bit by it as well. So it was like, you know, what's going on here? So, yeah, it's... it's... So this negative impact went quite far because yeah. a lot of people were impacted and probably, you know, for some, even their families were suffering from this, maybe. Mm. So, yeah, because you've got to think, you know, that, like I say, when you're having a bad day at work, we take it up, don't we? Even, even the most professional person in the world, you know, you, you close your book and you tidy your desk away at the end of, at the, end of the working day, whether that's five o'clock or eight o'clock at night, whatever it is, and you're right, I'm going home now. Yeah. You've got that, you've still got that energy, that, that negative aura inside of that, oh, I've had a really bad day. And then, you know, some people, not everybody, but some people then take it out on their, their loved ones. They don't mean to, but then it's like the grumpy and they're not really, you know, you can't be the if you're not positive. It's all energy, isn't it? If you're not, if you haven't got that positive energy when you go home, then you can't have a good evening with your wife or your husband, you know, whether you with your loved one. You just, it's just like, yeah. and then you like say you said it before. Then you were laid awake maybe at night. It's affecting your sleep. It can affect everything, can't it? Possibly. Yeah, it, it, it does have a, ne a negative impact on your well-being and, and even on, on your private life. And it's, it's the same in the corporate world. You know, there are lots of people who are burnt out. Uh, there is this, this problem of very long absenteeism as well. Now, in, in, in your case, what, what did you do? Which initiatives did you take in order to change the, the situation? So I think... You know, there's, there's a, every organization is different, you know, in terms of there's a system. So there's always a system there. Well, I'm saying there always is. I've not worked in civilian sector. So, but in the military, there's a system where you can, you can, you know, you can raise your concerns with the chain of command, um, either inside that directly or indirectly. Uh, there's complaints procedures. There's, you know, there's, there's loads of different channels you can go down to either eliminate or reduce or, you know, to, to sort out that issue or to try and, you know, mediate as, as, as that's what to, to overcome it. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I did. I, I went, you know, spoke to somebody, spoke to, got advice off other people, you know, et cetera. And, and it, it got sorted out, you know, ultimately in the end it, it did get sorted out. Um, and then, like I say, but, you know, I went on to bigger and better things. So it, it was all, it was a learning curve. And I think, you know, if, if you just flip it, like you say, you can flip anything into a, as we know, Fabian, you can flip any negative into a positive. And I am, I am glad that happened to me. I'm glad I experienced that. I, I'm, I'm grateful that I experienced that time, that six months or seven months or whatever it was. And, you know, because that's ultimately like yourself, it makes you the person you are today. And I think that's the key thing is if you can learn from that, I think that's, that's not, that's how not to do it. So I was exposed to an area of a senior manager how I believed how not to do things so if now I know how not to do it I can flip that around and think well how how do I do it you know for first time that I know maybe yeah that's really awesome and, and powerful because you know most people who have a bad role model unfortunately very often they copy that that kind of behavior um, yeah but um yeah of course you you can also choose and another way and, and, and learn from it and decide this is the way I won't, uh, you know, follow or adapt or, or whatever. Now, yeah. um, who do you consider as the most inspiring uh, leader and why? Is that, I mean, it's like you could have a list, couldn't you, like that when you read a lot as well. I mean, historically, I mean, you've got to look at people like Gandhi. I mean, we're talking... You know, you could you could even date all the way back to like the prophets and, and Jesus and things. But in terms of you know keeping it more more present, I think for me it was Winston Churchill because I've been I've always, I've always been a military man. My grandparent, you know, my granddad, my great granddad, all my, my cousin, a lot of my family were in the military. So for me, Winston Churchill, not ever you know, he was the right man for the right job at that time. If you were to put him as a prime minister today, it wouldn't work clearly because it's, it's a different time altogether. And we need to understand that that context. Um, <laughs> But, you know, he, he ultimately got the country through a difficult situation, you know, saved a lot of lives in, in World War Two, you know, carried us through that period and beyond. May, may I add? And, you know, he's prime minister several times. And, yeah, he, he, as I say, he did think that every, some things that people didn't agree with. 
ultimately. But, you know, overall, we've got to look back. And I just think his leadership as I've read quite a few books on him, but in the military, before he was, you know, politics prime minister, he was an excellent leader. And I recommend if anybody, you know, ever wants to read any kind of, you know, histories of leadership, Winston, some of Winston Churchill's books are, are fascinating. And ultimately, when he was prime minister, how he, you know, got a grip of, of the cabinet, as you will, as, of, of the government and was, you know, and just led by example. That's the key thing. You know, he was like, look, I'm I'm the man. I'm the prime minister. We're at war now with Hitler. You know, we, you know, and Mussolini and everyone else, we, we need to get a grip of things and carry it through. And I just it was robust leadership. It had to be at that time. So mm. like I say it, so a lot of the things there wouldn't work today. And we've changed. We've developed, obviously, over time. And that's historically that's somebody I've I've always you know, enjoyed reading about and things. Um, more present is, I just, it's a quote, it's a, it's a quote. We had a, a quartermaster. So a quartermaster in the army is, is a guy that's been through the ranks. He's been like the top rank as a soldier and then he's gone, become an officer. Anyway, this this guy, um, i never forget when I was on my junior leaders course for Lance Corporal. So anyway, long time ago. We were all sat in the in the like in the theater and he just walked in and it was meant to be he was meant to be delivering like a leadership lesson. It, well, it was a leadership lecture. Now I was only early 20s at the time. I'm now 44. So it's a long time ago. But one thing that he said, it's just stuck in my mind ever since. And all through my army career, and even now, is never forget where you come from. You know, no matter how high up high, high up you go, never forget where you've come from. And that's just like, I've not always lived by that. Obviously, we're not all perfect, but I've tried as the best account throughout my, all my military career, I've been through different regiments and stuff. And he's always tried to remember when I was a private soldier, when I was, you know, doing the rubbish jobs and, <laughs> and, and running around and, you know, working late nights. It's just always remember, you, you know, your friends as well on the way up. Great. So, uh, is 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 that uh, well, was that something you you learned from from him and and something you yeah you will remind, for instance, also your children of? Or yeah, de definitely, definitely. I mean, it's even now that I'm you know like I say I'm working with my wife in this business and we have clients, and you know even speak, speaking to them, you're not. I guess the the easiest thing for me, uh, I guess you know out of the military context is you're never above or below anyone that's the thing yes you might have a high rank you might have a higher status or you know like you might be a ceo a, a managing director so you've got that responsibility but you never you know you're not above the cleaner you know the person that's cleaning the toilets you're not above that person you know you're not below you know the prime minister he's a high you know there's there's he's got a job he's getting paid for that or whatever else but and people especially in lead, you know, leaders in management, they forget that they, and it becomes, you know, blurry. I'm not saying you need to be best friends with everybody because clearly, you know, um, there's, there's issues if you become too friendly with people in management and, you know, in leadership, but you definitely got to respect people, you know, massively for who they are and what they do. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, there is, uh, this, this old school type of leadership and, Personally, I really help uh, people, well, my, my clients are female managers. Mm. I help them to cultivate a new type of leadership. I help oh, them wow. become a servant leader because I really think that's the only way to go. And, and that, that is what the world badly needs. Mm. Um, so I would like to ask you, I, by, the, by the way, I have a few questions here. Yep. Uh, um, an, an inter interesting question uh, would be, um, what do you consider to be your zone of, of genius? And, and by that, I mean your unique uh, talents, your unique um, traits, uh, qualifications, maybe your mm. passion, etc. So what, what would that be? And how would you serve your clients based upon your own zone of genius yeah that's a that's a really good question and the yeah, elevator so for, first of all i think in t for qualifications and you know all my qualifications 95 percent of them uh well you know the majority i've done some university stuff and what have you but i don't i don't use it in history they're all military 
And but the thing with qualifications, unless you know, obviously, unless you're a surgeon, a doctor, a dietitian, and what you know, you, you clearly need them qualifications massively to, to practice. Um, but I think it's important to it's it's what you get from being qualified in doing something and the experience of doing that job or that role that is, is more important than the qualifications. Now, I guess to answer your question more directly in terms of my own, I guess, as you call it, genius or I, I just I'm just absolutely passionate about developing other people. Um, I have been for a long time. It started, I think I got the bug for it when I was, um, you know, a senior NCO in the military, training other people, training young soldiers and officers, seeing them develop, seeing them go out to Afghanistan and, you know, knowing that that I've trained them in, you know, in, in marksmanship to fire their weapons more accurately and, you know, and and teaching them how to teach and all the rest of it and loads of other stuff. And, it's, and seeing, you know, and then later down the line, bumping into them, and they've been promoted a few times and they've, they're doing well in their own careers. Yeah. The, feel, the feeling that I get from that is worth more than gold. It's worth more than any amount of money. You know, Charlie Jean, you know, my wife's the same, you know, when she gets nice emails and messages saying this was life changing or you've really helped me out here. That's that's so for me, I guess my, my genius or the, the, the thing that I is to help other people the best I can with the knowledge and the experience that I have. Now, if that means I drag it, I've dragged that from some qualifications. Perfect. Um, but I think more often it's, it's more from experience and having a passion to learn all the time. You know, I'm constantly like you, Fabian, we're constantly reading out his podcasts on audible books, physical books. I mean, all that stuff there behind us is Charlie's on, you know, sports, nutrition and dietetics, but you've got to keep yourself a few chapters ahead every sim- single day and then that way i think if you just keep like sharpening your blade you can help other people as well um you know and for, for me that's that's my genius is is just having that i've got loads of bags and bags as you can tell of positive energy and it's just sharing that with other people you know sharing that positive energy uh, to ena- to enable them to think right i can do this you know and, and bringing people on as well and that's that, i think that's a, if that answers it i don't know maybe <laughs> No, that that's so valuable. I I think it's even invaluable because you know we definitely need uh, inspiring mentors and leaders uh, mm. just like you. So um, if you had to choose a topic or you know whatever something you you still would like to learn or, or mm. master, what would that be? um yeah again it's another great question i think for for me it's just i'm just trying to master myself that might sound cheesy i don't know some people might be thinking what you know i'm a i guess i'm not at war with anyone i'm a you know i'm I'm a peaceful guy you know i left the military a long time ago and but in in terms of when i say i'm at war with myself i'm at battle with myself daily just to become every using every single day to become even one percent better than yesterday yeah. until until the day i die you know until until i can't do progress anymore really or you know if i'm if I, you know late if i get to 80 or 90 or whatever and i can't do it then fine but until that time until i physically and mentally can't do it it's just using every single day to become a better a better father i've got i've got four children so it's become a better father yeah um, you know because n- nobody's perfect nobody nobody's the perfect mom dad business owner and we never will be right but it's it, what we can do is use every minute of every day. And we don't, we all have bad days. We all do, you know, no matter how positive we are. But it's, it's using every minute of every day, wherever we can. We all get the same time. We all get the same time. So, you know, it's one thing we all share, no matter how rich or poor we are, we all get the same time. And for me, it's just using every single day to become a better person. Because if I become a better person, then the people around me, I can, I can help them. You know, for, you know, hopefully further be in a better position to help them as well. So if they come to me with a problem or they say, oh, you know, hopefully I can I can di- help them out in their life as well. So yeah. it has that ripple. It's a ripple effect, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Yes, you create this ripple effect, this this far-reaching positive impact. Yeah. Really awesome. So in that sense, you definitely are a mentor. You definitely are a leader, and and you already answered the next question because I wanted to ask you, um, well, um, in 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 which way? What what are you doing to become the leader of your dreams? But I think that you already uh, um, replied to this question by yeah. what you told me. 
Okay. Um, I, no, it's, again, the big, the big, I guess the best advice that I was given, and I'm just repeating what, you know, off a mentor when I was in the military, uh, that's like we always do. We're always echoing other, other bits of advice that we've been given that have been excellent. And we've, <clears throat> is the first, the first thing about like whether, you know, you're into, there's all different types of leadership, right? There's all different types. We could talk about different types. There's masculine, there's feminine, there's this, there's that. There's loads of different types, but leadership starts with you. You know, leadership starts, if you can't lead yourself, you can't lead another person. And, you know, that can, it kind of runs into the, you know, the, the saying lead by example. And we don't always lead by example. I don't care, you know, who you are, you know, as we said before, you're not the perfect mom, dad, CEO, business owner, this, that, the other. So there's always going to be a time where oh, I'm not really leading by example here. Yeah. But as long as we keep trying, as long as, we, you know, we turn up, we keep trying, we keep learning and trying to develop and, and reflecting as well and thinking I messed up there or I could have done that a little bit better. Yeah. I think I upset such and such there because I was a bit grumpy or, you know, and as long as we keep doing that, but leadership starts with you. It starts, you know, with with us being honest, you know, being all the different, there's loads of different values. But if you can lead yourself, then I think that's the, that's the starting point. That's the foundation. And then, but leading other people, has been for me uh, and anybody that's watching this that's in management and is, is going to go into you know middle and senior management, the most humbling thing in the world, especially in the you know in the military and now in the civilian sector, is is being able to lead men and women. You know, it's it's, it's it really is a humbling thing to do, and if you think of it like that, is like you've been given this gift really to have people you know working. You're along, remember, not underneath or below or above but working alongside all these fascinating people yes. to do whatever job. Mm. And, and they're looking at you for, you know, inspiration, for development. It is humbling. And when you, when you look at it like, you know, and be more selfless, I think, right, how can I better develop myself to better develop the team? And I think, yeah, that's... Absolutely, that's so true. You know, when you are a leader, it's not about you, it's about your team. But of yeah. course, it all starts with you. And, um, well being a leader i believe that you know you have great power you have great power to do good to to motivate and inspire people and make people smile and to make them to develop and uh, that's the power of of a leader it's not about hierarchy it's not about titles uh, mm. it's about indeed self-leadership and um yeah, yeah wanting to do good isn't it yeah yeah exactly and it's like i say it's different everywhere you go this a lot of things are, this, are similar, whether it's the military, whether it's civilian sector, but there is a lot of similarities, but, the, you know, it's, it's different it's different as well. But it's finding what works for you, but more importantly, what works for the team as well, because you've got to try different things. That's, that's the key thing. You try, you wake up one day and try something and it can go south and it's like, oh, that, <laughs> that didn't work well. Um, but then it's, it's reflected on that, isn't it, Fabian, you know, and then going, right, why didn't that work well? How can I, how can I improve that next time? And the best sometimes the best way is to ask the people around you as well you know maybe your mentor so people that you know maybe that you look up to um that, that are maybe mentoring you or even the team you know ask the team because if you can get the team involved that's another fascinating thing you know what how do you think we could do that better next time you know i i think that this is 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 missing in general you know um in in the corporate world, you know, that, that my target group of female managers and most of them work in the corporate world. Yeah. We can learn from the military because if you don't communicate with your team uh, and the team with you as a leader, and if you don't ask that their feedback, well, give and ask feedback, your life depends on it, isn't it? You, I mean, you could die. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Some dangerous situations, yeah. Yes. And of course, you have uh, worked with, with women as well. Yeah. Would you have a, a specific advice for female leaders? It's, again, yeah, it's, it's quite diverse. I say diverse in the, in the military. So I've worked, I was very fortunate, actually. So I guess without going into mega detail, uh, and the first 14 years of my career, career sorry, were, were quite male dominant in terms, I was in the infantry, but certainly towards the latter end of my career, in the middle, I trained, like I said before, I trained females and males, but that was more training. But then in terms of management, to answer your question, uh, I, was, I was in an organization for the last 
I'd say three, four years of my career where I finished. And it was a mix, a mix of female and male, um, you know, of, of personnel. And, you know, when I was a, a sergeant major, my ultimately my boss, the commanding officer was a female, you know, and she was, you know, amazing leader. You know, she was very, very robust, very, you know, with with all the soldiers and, you know, men and women. And yeah, she, she, she had a lot of, you know, good points about, you know, strong points about her. And ultimately, we had women, you know, up, I say up and down, but I remember it was in terms of rank, not, you know, and it is difficult. Uh, I don't know about the civilian sector, and Fabian, I know you've probably got loads of experiences that way you have, as in examples, I mean, where in the military, this uh, there has been obviously in the past, uh, you know, sexist remarks, you know, it, it's it's a lot less than what it when I left it was a lot less than it has been in the past. It's improving all the time, but certainly you know the men you know thinking that they're better than the women. And you know what? Sometimes they are, but sometimes they're not. You know that's the fact of life. Wherever you go, uh, which I believe to be true, is like you know. And I think for for females out there, if you're good and you know you good, you know you know you're good and you can do your job. Ultimately, you just need to get yourself get yourself out there and and crush it because and I know it's difficult sometimes because I've, I've seen females in the military where they have struggled and you know in, in terms of um you know feel that they're under pressure from from men that are higher rank than them and and things like that so it has be it does get difficult for them and can be a bit teary sometimes for them you know but ultimately I think as long as you keep developing yourself which we mentioned before professional and personal development all the time and I think it's fair game you know because some females that I've worked with are phenomenal, you know, in the military, really good. And, you know, and even now that in the British Army, they're allowed in the infantry now. So they're now joining the infantry, um, you know, whereas before that was just men. Um, so it's all changing. For, and rightly so, you know, because women, you know, they, they it, regardless, men and women, we all have positives. We all have negatives. We all bring something to the party and everybody brings something different, don't they? And that's the key thing. We, uh, some women have have really good talent, you know, over men. And then some men are the same, you know, so it's like, yeah, there's good, there's good and bad in everyone is, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's, that's really great. And this, this uh, excellent leader, you this female leader you had in, in yeah. according to you, what was her secret weapon? I mean, weapon is maybe not very well chosen. Yeah, no, no, I think, I think to be fair, there's probably if I was to pick two to keep it simple, two two things that come to mind straight away is she had a ruthless determination to succeed, and that's a quote of, of probably another officer in the army when I was in the army. She she was just so you know like a la laser focus like a laser like focus on her job, um, you know on 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 the task at hand, the hierarchy, you know what they wanted, the bigger picture. She was, you know. And I think so that's the first thing that comes to mind. And the other one is, like I said before, she's that resilience. She was very resilient. And around other men, she did not take any shit, you know, <laughs> like, and in the military, that's important, you know. Um, she'd soon, she, she had no fear in whipping someone into place, you know, in, in, the, in the chain of command, if needs be. She, she never shouted, so that was a key thing. She don't need to shout here. It's the way she did it. What, what the words that come out of her mouth were powerful enough to say, right? I need to, yeah. So she was very, very down the line. Yeah, that's really an amazing story. I mean, it's not a story. It's 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 lived, isn't it? It's it's yeah. Real real life uh, real life case. So that that's really fantastic. Uh, let me check whether I have um, uh, other questions for you. Um, yeah, I have a good one actually. If you would unapologetically follow your heart, yeah, what would you be doing? I believe that you are already doing it. <laughs> yeah, I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm lucky, and you know, I read all the time. And if any of if anyone's watching this, that's you know in the military, about to leave the military, for example, or you know, leave a or even if you're in an organization, you know, a, f a female or a male in, in an organization. And it's, it's, I always used to think it sounded cheesy when I was in the army, where people used to say, and people use passion now, the word passion, it just gets thrown around. But when they say, follow your dream, follow your passion, and you're like, yeah. but actually, 
<laughs> it's, it is true, you know, and I'm livid now because, you know, what I'm doing now, it's not about the money. It's not about, it's, it's literally what is fulfilling. I mean, ultimately we need, we need an income because it's the world we're living in, you know, money creates choice, doesn't it? It creates uh, more, more, you know, things we can do more with the family and, um, and all that. And we could create more experiences, but in terms of, you know, like to say, it's just, you've got to do what you, what you love doing. You've got to look, you know, that's, that's the key thing because you only live once. I know it's again, unless you're, you know, you're into like, and I know everybody's religion is different. Some people's religion, I think is it Buddhism where it's, we're on a journey and there's an next. So without disrespecting kind of religion, everybody's, but we, we only have this, this body once, you know? Um, I think, yeah, we all say we've all got, got to make the most of every day. We've got to make the most of the life because we don't know what, how long it is, how short it's going to be. And, you know, what is the point in being in a job that you don't love, where you're being grumpy, where it's affecting your sleep, where it's affecting you emotionally? And and I've been there, you know, I've, I've had bad times and dark times in the army, and I'm sure many other people have. I'm sure, Fabian, you've had some dark times in your life. You know, we all have in work I'm talking about. And if that is just a blip, and fine, you know, we all have blips. But if that's continuous, you've got to, you've got to think, right? Is this really worth? Is this really worth the hassle? Is it worth? Is it worth the money? You know, is this money worth it? Or is it? You know, do I need the courage just to leave what I'm doing and and follow that? And that's difficult as well because some people are like, yeah, but I don't know what to do. Yeah. And do you know what I found to be true is the reason, generally, not for everybody is people don't think, you know, people don't sit down with themselves with a journal, a notebook and pen and just spend time to themselves thinking because people are too busy into Netflix and social media and everything's just on permanent send all the time, isn't it? Like, oh, all day and you go to bed and you're like trying to go to sleep. Whereas if you just chill out, you know, whether that's you into meditating, but, you know, and for an hour or even two hours a day and just to think and have headspace, it's amazing what your brain comes up with. Yeah, that, that's really an, an, an excellent uh, suggestion and, and tip. I, I also believe that a lot of people flee, you know, in Netflix and, and all of that, but a lot of people also tell themselves all sorts of stories. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In order to stay in their own comfort zone, they don't yeah. leave their comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Stories are the like you can, and the thing is, you can you can unpick and create your own story, can't you? That's that's the fascinating part of it. But if you if you're honest with yourself and go right, that's the story I've created, or the story that I'm living in. And as soon as it's, it's identifying it first of all, and, and owning up to it, and thinking, ah, oh, and then once you do that, it's very easy to start unpicking it. It's just that most people, like you've just alluded to, just carry on regardless and drift through each day, which is a shame, really. And you know, it, it really is because everybody's put on this earth for a reason, right? I believe that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. absolutely. And it's like you just said, we have only one life and only one career. And it's mm. it's my life and it's my career. So I take yeah. decision and I take my power back. And my, I mean, that, that's absolutely true. We can achieve whatever we want. Mm. And we become who we believe we are. I mean, and, and that's something I, I really dream of a world where all of those things will be uh, taught to children from yeah. a, a very young age. That's really missing uh, yeah. our education system. But uh, uh, anyway, we're, we're not here to talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a completely different subject. I could speak for hours as well. That is, yeah, I'm very passionate about that. <laughs> We all have lots and lots and lots of means and resources yeah. to educate ourselves. So we don't depend on the education system anymore. And, and that's another question I would, li would like to ask you, Glenn. Um, uh, how do you like to learn? And what, we, what would you recommend to, to female managers? And, yeah, sorry, can you repeat that? Sorry, Fabian. Just, uh, so, how do you like to learn? Oh, to learn. Yeah, I thought you said to work. Okay. So how would I like to learn? What would I recommend to female managers? Um, so how I like to learn is, so there's, you know, everybody knows that you go to school or university to, you know, learn <laughs> things that you need in life, like, you know, the basics. But really, I think education starts when you leave school, when you leave college or university. And then that's where the real learning starts. You know, when you start crafting your, crafting 
the thing that you're doing. So for female managers, um, any managers, but for female managers, you know, some of you are up against it and it is a shame and it's changing. I'm glad it's changing. And Fabian, you know, it's, I, you know, I, I love you to bits that what you're doing is, is amazing. And we've, we've had this chat before, you know, that you are so passionate in, in disrupting the industry and it needs to be done, you know, because there's fascinating women out there and I've worked with them, you know, I've lived that experience in the military and, and for those women that are out there and if you, there'll be some watching this that, and you're not quite there yet, is you will get there. Clearly there's things that you're going to need to help you and that's going to help you along the way. And a few things that have, have certainly not just helped me, but I've seen other women like the one I mentioned, you know, she was the high ranking officer. So she had a mentor. The first thing is she had this excellent mentor. Um, I think, so my boss, the, the woman in question was a Lieutenant Colonel. So it's, if you into you understand ranks of the British Army, um, well above that is a Brigadier. It's like quite a few ranks. It's a couple of ranks higher. So she had a brigadier, but this brigadier, I want just any, there's quite a lot of brigadiers, was a, a proper ninja, you know, like really, really good. So that was her, men, it was her mentor. It was her kind of secret weapon in that respect. That she'd always go to this brigadier for advice, counselling, as you will, you know, before she made any big decisions and he'd always keep her on track. So that's that's the key thing is, is have a mentor, have an expert mentor. The other, the other thing is, and it's a totally different subject, we're not, going to get into it tonight unfortunately i know charlie g will will mention it when you have a when you bring my wife on and chat to her is health you've got to look after your health you've got to look after yourself you know be kind to yourself um and that everybody just thinks oh i go to the gym or go for a run or it's not just your physical fitness that is more important than that you know i mean clearly the equal is important you could argue but your mental health is your mindset, performance mindset, as I like to call it, is, is everything, especially management, you know, and female managers, you know, if you think you're up against it because maybe there's competition at work with men, maybe, you know, you, you feel that you're overlooked, then you've got to get that edge. And that's in the military. I've seen women that have, they've had to find that edge and it's finding way, it's just completely finding that, but crafting it every single day. That's the best advice you can give anyone. So to, to kind of summarise is have a mentor, have an expert above, you You know, I say no one's above you, but somebody that's higher than you in terms of they've got more um, more experience. They are where you want to get to, or they've lived, you know, they've gone down that path before. Everybody understands that. Um, so that's the first one. And then the other one is don't waste any time, you know, apart from, you know, obviously family time and stuff in crafting, crafting what you do. So learning all the time, read, you've got to read all the time. You know, what's the saying? Read, uh, le great leaders are readers. And it's true. They are. There's no way around it. You know, whether it's Winston Churchill, you know, that every great leader in this, in this planet that's ever lived and has all studied. Now, obviously today it's amazing because we've got like audible books, we've got podcasts, there's some amazing podcasts out there. Um, the ones that don't keep trying to upsell you all the time, but uh, <laughs> so there's, but there is some really good podcasts out there. There's loads of ways of learning, and it's just crafting every day. You know, sharpening your blade, as, as we say, because that that in itself, female managers that, that are out there, that'll give you the edge. That will give you an edge above eighty percent of managers out there. Because most managers don't do it. They go, to, you know that. <laughs> because you know we we are our greatest asset and we are our best investment. And, yeah. Um, I really do hope that this will change. This mindset will change uh, mm. globally. Um, maybe it, it, it will change now. Be thanks, thanks to COVID because, you know, uh, the world was turned upside down. And yeah. So um, I, I really believe that, that a lot of changes will still uh, come our way and also yeah. the, way in, the way in which we learn and, and the need, the need for, for continuously developing ourselves mm. in, in various areas. Yeah, absolutely. Let me check whether I have another maybe last question for you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you could change one thing in the world, what would you <laughs> That's easy, so easy, um, for, you know, for what I do now especially. So if I could change one thing, it would be to... I, I use the word standardise, but I don't mean, you know, like... But to standardise health and fitness industry, you know, even though I'm ex-military... Because, so, you know, the health and fitness industry 
is it's in bits, you know, and it's, it doesn't help. It's the same with anything, you know. There's that much information out there now. It's information overload with global technology. It's only getting bigger and better in some respects, worse. But you know, artificial intelligence is is upon us. It's that's developing, at, you know, at a speed of a thousand gazelles, and it's just like it's just like this. Everything's like that, but you know it's difficult like you know yourself when you're trying to you know you're trying to hold your hand out and pull female managers through through the mess the carnage of information overload we're doing it with people with ibs you know because they're like oh i've tried this i've tried that i've listened to this i've listened to that and it's all bs and it's that and this didn't work and that do it and it's just a mess whereas if we could if there was a standardization like the world health organization or whatever it'd be very difficult clearly probably impossible so it's one i'm saying it's one thing i'd, I'd like to change but it's it's probably an impossibility as well. Like, you know, like world peace is not going to happen. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it would be to standardize the health and fitness industry because, you know, there's, there's stuff out there. There's people out there that are, that are fake, you know, in any sector, obviously, Fabian, you know, it could be any sector. But when it comes to like the health and the fitness, you know, people saying you need to take this supplement and drink that much water and do this and do that. And a lot of the times it's dangerous and it's causing people more harm than good. And it's taking them further down, down, you know, down the hole, down a darker hole or, you know, away from their goals yes. and complicating things when really half the time, simply, you know, simplicity is the key to mastery. You've got to keep things simple. And it's just like do X, Y and Z consistently and you'll be fine. And that's why I kept it simple with the female managers always be one step ahead of everybody else with learning, constantly reading and learning all the time. You will be head and shoulders above the most of the managers out there uh, hands down you know that's a fact just by learning and reading and, and, a, and the thing is as well sorry to, to finish on that one example is applying the knowledge because knowledge isn't power unless it's applied you know do, do, do you know what i mean so it's, it's all right reading books and go that was the right book what did you learn don't know but it was a good book <laughs> it's like apply one or two things from it and then if you keep doing that you know, so yeah, I'd change that. I'd standardize things and make things more more safe, really. Um, get rid of all the BS so to help people. That that is very interesting what you're saying, because of course, yeah, we, we have lots and lots of, of, of sources, you know, like mm. podcasts and, and, and lots, lots of stuff out there, you know, free, free stuff. But it doesn't bring real change. I truly believe that you need someone who shows you step by step, you know, and who takes you by the hand and, and helps you to implement. And that's what, what coaches and mentors do. Yeah. And, and then, you know, uh, the change will be sustainable, of course. Um, it's also a matter of mindset. So you have yeah. to be willing to to transform yourself really and and then there is this uh, sustainable change to, to yeah transform yourself then things will change absolutely 100 percent, yeah and the, the thing is as well is the key thing is so many people you mentioned free information and you know whether it's, it's females trying to be better at, you know being better managers people are trying to sort their ibs out or lose weight you know be fitter or whatever it, whatever the goals are it's and I've been there. We all have where we've tried getting the free information off YouTube, off Google, Doctor Google, the experts, and it just creates more confusion half the time. When again, we we mentioned you know before simplicity is just if you by going to the the right help, you know, for the expert, whether it's you know in the military, you know, like I said before, it's dangerous. You go on operations, you go to war, it's dangerous. You've got to have the best training of the best instructors, yeah. you know, instructors that know what they're doing. They could train you properly. I mean, the special air service, you know, Navy SEALs, yeah. they, they don't they don't just go on YouTube and go, oh, how how do we you know, how do we storm a ship that's been overtaken by terrorists? Let's watch YouTube for a few hours and get some free downloadable books. That'll help. <laughs> no, they don't, do they? They go, they get the best of the best, you know, instructors in, yeah. amazing instructors that are, you know, high, highly paid instructors because they they, you know, it's it's a big skill set, it's a big skill that's required. So yeah. it's you know, it's in direct proportion, really. No, everyone has a mentor and a coach in the, the entertainment industry. I mean, artists, mm. rock stars, athletes, and female managers, and of course, also male managers, they are corporate athletes, and they don't have, have a mentor. They, they must be kidding. I mean, it's impossible. Mm. Uh, 
uh, yeah, that's that's really interesting. Well, thank you so much, Glenn, for this very very inspiring conversation. That's all right. Thank you. Fun, isn't it? We yeah. could really go on for for, for ages. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, I would like to suggest to wrap up and in order to wrap up, can you please tell our audience uh, where can they find you? Oh yeah, I mean guys, if, if I mean clearly I'm, in terms of management, if you're, you're in the right place with Fabian you know, <laughs> massively, you know you've, you've, the amount of advice and help you gave me over, you know, the last six to eight months has been phenomenal. So, you know, and I thought, you know, you don't know everything. That's the, the thing, isn't it? I thought I knew a lot from being in the military, but it's, it's, you don't know everything. It's always trying to get, uh, but in terms of what we do, as I said before, and Charlie Jean's going to get on here and speak to you at some point, I'm sure about the, you know, the, the female side of life, you know, when she was a female manager, so not, not to sort of dive into that. Uh, but yeah, we are on, we've got, a, you know, fantastic Facebook group, um for ibs it's uh, ibs and uh, sports nutrition insiders uh, again we'll put some links below so you can hook up with me on there if you want to join the group if you've got irritable bowel syndrome you know and, and you're into your fitness and you're a professional and listen you know having ibs and being in management is it is horrendous as well you know the amount of clients we've had that are professional you know middle and senior managers ceos uh, directors that you know constantly worrying where the toilets are you know, where, where really they should be focusing on the, the next board meeting. They're in the board meeting, the stomach's rumbling. It's just horrendous. So if you are struggling, guys, seriously, and you just want to, even if you just want to have a chat, you know, I'm, I'm like I say I'm here to help. Um, hook up me on Facebook. You type in my name. You'll, you'll easily be able to find me. Uh, send me, you know, send a request on there and dive in and we can, we can hook up, you know, no problem. No problem at all. Great, great. Um, I will put your details uh, below this uh, yeah. video again. And then uh, people can find you and they, they can even hop on a call with you. Uh, yeah. If you yeah, please, yeah. Okay. Well, would you, would you like to add anything to this uh, fantastic conversation? I, I, yeah, I just want to finish with, and it's a quote from, and if you guys, especially, if, you know, female managers, and you, uh, it's a quote from a guy called Jim Rohn. He, he died a long time ago. He's an American businessman. Uh, entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, and he's got some, the, the Audible books of his are phenomenal, are phenomenal, you know, and I couldn't speak, I've read them so many times, listened to them so many times, and th there's one thing that he says, and I've, you know, I've thought, wow, is we all whinge, we all have bad days, we can all complain, and we can all get up and, you know, be in a bad mood, and think, you know, this is not working, and we're, you know, we're struggling to be a good manager, maybe a female manager, you're struggling to out, you know, outperform the men or what, you know, whatever is the environment that you're in is don't wish it was easier because too many people do that. Oh, I wish it was easier. I wish this was easier. I wish you were better. And that's something that he said in his book. So it's not my quote, it's Jim Rohn's. Don't wish it was easier. I wish you were better. And then just to stack onto that is visualize the person you want to become with help. You know, clearly you may need help is visualize the person you want to become or just have a look at, you know, think about who you want to become, whether it's a, you know, middle manager, a senior manager, how, what per, you know, what do you need to be to get there? You know, what attributes, what values do you need to be? Because it won't be the person you are now. You're going to have to make changes. And that's where that saying comes in is don't wish it was easy, wish you were better. And then start making steps towards that with help, you know, from uh, a mentor, coaching, it all, it accelerates you to get there. So that's, I just want to finish on that is just keep, use every day to become better, better parent, a better CEO, better manager. And you, you'll all get there. Everybody, everybody's got success in them, right? In whatever area. Even if being successful is being just a great stay-at-home mom with three kids, I think that's humbling as well. Success is, you know, is is in the eye of the beholder. It's not what anybody else thinks. So, yeah, stay, keep, keep, keep it real. <laughs> Absolutely, it's uh, it's relative, and but it's it's definitely also an inside job. It it all starts with you, isn't it? So yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Glenn, for this um, this conversation. It it was a real pleasure, <laughs> and uh, well, we will be in touch anyway later. Yeah. And, um, I I do hope. Uh, well, no, I don't hope. I'm I'm absolutely sure that, uh, that our audience will uh, will find this uh, conversation very valuable. So thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. Thank you for having me on here. Thank you very much. Welcome. Bye. Take care. Good luck. Bye.
Bye.